all right welcome back guys uh in this video here uh we're going to be discussing what is composite function um what is one-to-one -one function and what is inverse functions and, and it's going to help us um understand quite a bit or have an idea um for the two major functions that we study in this chapter overall and those are exponential functions very important function and also logarithmic function as well um so let's let's get started um let's start with composite function what is composite function the word composite you know in english referring to you are composing things together you put one thing to another thing and you try and make whatever that new thing would be it's the same thing with mathematics right we have functions take input uh and map to an output and then perhaps we can use some of the output to a map into another output, right? So we're composing, you know, multiple functions together. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture, and hopefully from the picture we can have an idea what is composition function before we get into um, the uh, notation and the mathematical formula and then examples as well. Uh, so let's start with the function f. Okay, suppose we define a function f that takes, that takes you know, a set of input call this domain, right, that's what we learned uh, in the previous chapter, uh, and the domain consists of all the x values, and, and, and map all those x values into a set of, you know, range, which is going to be all the y values. So this is, this is one function, right? This is what we understand up to this point. We have a formula, we have an equation that, you know, whatever that formula could be, it could be 3x plus 1, x squared plus 2, whatever that is, and it takes all these x values to you know, map it to another set, and, and the output of that, you know, we call that y value, we call that range, right? So now, composition function comes in and says, hey, you know what, what if, what if I want to do something, I want to take some of these output, perhaps just a subset of it, like this, just this portion, maybe all of it, maybe some of it, let's start with this, this, you know, this set here. Suppose I want to take some of this y value, some of this range here. I'm going to go ahead and map these guys. Just map this guy. I'm going to define a function called that g, and I'm going to map these guys here to another output set over here, right? So now we have we have these guys here, this, this f of x, which is the y value in for the f function. It's being used as, you know, input for the g function. And now the these outputs here... These output are just the, the range of the G function. And the range of G functions consists of all, all these, you know, uh, call this G value. But uh, the G values are just the ones that we take in f of x and we use as input. So now become, you know, inside the G functions. So let's go with that one more time. First, we start with, we start with, with, you know, a function f, we take all these inputs x, map those guys to a set of output, which is called the range, and those are essentially a y value, so that's what we know by. And then we say, you know what, let's, let's see if we can go further. Let's use a part of this y value as input for a new function g, right? And map those guys to another set. So now we have two functions composing each other, right? And that's, that's what composition function is. Um, Let's look at an example what we have in real life, right? So example in real life where we actually use composition function. Let's say, you know, I want to figure out what my shoe size would be if I was to go to Asia, if I would go, was to go to Vietnam, right? How do I figure that out? I mean, one way is I can just try on different pair of shoes, different size, and perhaps, you know, I'll find size that uh, a pair of shoes that fit me, and that's probably the easiest way. But there's gotta be there's gotta be a mathematical equation uh, that will do the work for us, so we don't have to do all the trying on different pairs, right? So uh, shoe size would be an example of composition function. If I was to say my shoe size in the United States is eight and a half, how would I figure that out for you know Vietnam shoe size? Of course, it's a different number, but we can convert that to a different country. Let's say. England, if I go to England, I can convert my U.S. shoe size to England shoe size, and then from England, uh, convert that to, uh, you know, Vietnam uh, shoe size, right? Vietnamese shoe size. So that's one example. Another example would be, you know, uh, currency, money, right? So 
we know that U.S. dollars is worth a lot more than a different country. For example, in Vietnam, one U.S. dollar is equivalent to like almost a million something Vietnamese dong, right? It's, it's insane. Uh, but we can always say, okay, one U.S. dollars, one USD is equivalent to, you know, 110 yen, which is Japanese currency. But then is there a direct conversion from Vietnamese dong, Vietnamese currency, to, you know, Japanese yen or Japanese currency? The, the answer is yes. You know, so there are, there is mathematical formula that do this, right, to convert, you know, all across. And that's, that's composition function. That's what it means to compose, you know, two different equations together to get an output that we desire. Um, so that's the only two example I can think of here. So perhaps, you know, you can open another one your own. Um, but why don't we go straight to notation? Okay, so notation and definitions of composition functions, right? So this is what we're going to do for a classroom example or a classroom in terms of what we learn in this class. Um, so if if we define the function f, so let's so let f and g be function, be the two functions, okay? And if we define f compose g, right? So we say f compose g, right? So this is the definition, right? Uh, what that means is we take the input x, we compose that inside g, and then that becomes the output for the g function, and we use that as an input for f. Okay, so that's the definition of what f compose g. Uh, the word compose kind of translates to this little circle notation here. So this this is f compose g, right? So that, that's what it means. Uh, we can also do the same thing for g. We start with g function, and then we compose f function, right? So f compose g of x, meaning we take the input x, we're going to go ahead and feed that into the f functions that become an output, whatever that output is, f of x or y values. Now that being used as an input for the g function, right? So g compose f, meaning g of f of x, right? So uh, this is g compose f, okay? We're going to make a note, we're going to say composition functions, so note that these two things, these two functions are not the same. So don't be mistaken that that tiny circle, that is not multiplication, that's a notation for composition. Um, it is not commutative. Uh, so this next example is going to show us that it is still a function, but it's, it's, it's not commutative. The, 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 the f compose g output may or may not always be the same as g composed of f, okay? So let's look at an example, okay? We said, all right, so we have two functions, f of x and g of x. The f of x function defined as just a linear function three times x. The g of x function defined as a parabola, um, one plus x squared. And we want to find out part a, we want to find out what is the Final output, if we take the input phi, x equal to phi, and we're going to compose that into g, and then take the output, compose that into f. So the very first thing is we're trying to understand what this no this question is asking, you know, what this notation means. So f of g of phi, f compose g of phi. So this means we take the input phi, we're going to feed that into the g function, right, whatever that is. And then we're going to take that final, that answer, and then we're going to feed that into f, okay? So that's what this notation means. So on the side, we say, all right, well, let's start with the inside. Let's start with what g of phi. Okay, what well, g of phi, it just means, you know, from the early on chapter, g of phi function notation, why it says that we take the input phi, and then we're going to use that as x for the g function. So that means 1 plus phi squared. So that's become 26. So the output for the g function when x is phi is 26. So now that 26 is being used as an input for the f function. Okay, 
And again, applying the function notation, what does it mean when f of 26? It means 26 now being used as the input for x, and the function f is 3 times x, meaning we have 3 times 26, and that is 78. Okay, so we start with x equal to 5. Okay, we say that let's map that to g, it becomes 26. We take that output 26, let's map that using the f of function, so that becomes 78. So f of g of phi, the answer of that is 20, um, 78, sorry. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and let you do this part on your own here and, and, and realize that these two things are not the same as, as what we mentioned up here in our note. Um, but I'm, I am gonna help you, the first step here, g of f of phi, we're gonna try and figure out what that is. It means g f of phi, right? So we do, from the inside and then work our way out to the outside. Okay. So I'll let you work that out. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add part C. Okay. Now notice that in A and B, we're asking to find the composition function output for a particular x value, five in this case. Now we can do this for any arbitrary value of x, just as the definition stated above. Now suppose I want to find out, you know, I want to find what would be the composition function, the formula uh, for f composed g if I use an arbitrary input x. Uh, you know, whatever x can be, it could be 5, could be 10, could be 20, I don't know. It could be anything, I don't care. I just want to see what the formula will help me with the, the formula for these two functions will be. In a way, what we're doing here is like, you know, x is arbitrary, meaning, hey, if I, using the true side example here again, if I said, you know, I have a formula that convert any shoe size in the United States to, you know, Vietnam shoe size, what is that equation? What is that formula? And, and essentially, that's what we're doing here. It's not, this example doesn't really, these are not the actual formula, but you kind of get an idea. Okay, so first what we do is we say, all right, let's just go ahead and apply the definition. Okay, what this f of g means. It means we are taking g of x and then we're going to compose that inside f of x. Uh, arbitrary x is being used as input. So when we plug that into g function, the output is going to be whatever that answer is. It's going to be g of that value x. But we do know what g of x is already. Is this formula here. This is what g of x is, the output you know, the output for g function, if x is x, is going to be 1 plus x squared. That's the output. If x is 5, g of 5 is going to be 26. It's arbitrary. So the g of x part is easy. It's already been taken care of. So now we're going to go ahead and compose this part into the f function. Now, this is a little bit confusing because it's not a particular value. It's just all variable, uh, arbitrary x value. So it's kind of confusing to kind of wrap our head around it. So now we're at this step where we asking to do it here is, hey, whatever the input is for the f function, that could be 30, 60, we don't know, but it is in the form of 1 plus x squared. If it's in the form of 1 plus x squared, that is being used for the f function, and the f function is 3x, okay? If the input is 5, then it's 15. If the input is 1, then it's going to be 3. If the input is 4, it's going to be 12. But now our input, our input, it's going to be 1 plus x squared, whatever that is. We don't care what that equal to. All we know that if that is the input that is being used for this function f of x, then we need to uh, insert that in place of the x. So we get 3 times whatever this thing is, 1 plus x squared, and simplify that. That would give us 3 plus 3x squared. So the formula we're looking for for f composed g of x for any arbitrary x value is going to be 3 plus 3x squared, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video uh, for the first part here, just allowing you to just kind of go back and, and take some note or do some example regarding composition function on your own. And then in the next part for this lesson, we're gonna introduce in one-to-one function and um, inverse functions.